Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and I want to thank a lot of you guys for tuning in to our live broadcast yesterday of the launch of Eagle 6 from our engineering department here in the high school and I've gotten a lot of emails and gotten a lot of questions and so I wanted to sort of fill you in on what the outcome of the flight on uh, Eagle 6 was. The good news is, is that the uh, systems that were developed by our engineering students here perform flawlessly. They main maintained a really strong telemetry link with the high altitude balloon for 20 miles downrange and then up to about 20,000 feet. At that point, they begin to lose uh, lose connection with the uh, with the package. So maintaining a 20 mile uh, microwave data link was a really great engineering feat. And then while that data link was maintained, all the systems in the classroom worked uh, flawlessly. So our live visuals worked, the nine axis worked, the uh, uh, the pressure, temperature, all the data came in and everything was working uh, working really great. We were particularly pleased with the live streaming uh, video that was coming back from the high altitude balloon. <clears throat> We were getting really great high definition video all the way out till 20 miles and 20,000 feet up where we begin to, uh, to lose connection. We, uh, what we want to try next time, we believe that uh, the initial evaluations that we were doing are pointing on the high gain antenna was really, really accurate. We're really convinced that we had a, a high degree of accuracy on our pointing. And so finally at 20 miles, we just, uh, we did not have the <coughs> level of gain in the antenna that we needed. And so what we're looking at for our next launches, we're looking at higher gain antenna, a larger parabolic dish, and hopefully allow us to reach out there further next time. Remember one of the challenges is we're broadcasting on the radio and the antenna system at one watt, and so trying to get high definition video on a one watt signal over a long distance is pretty challenging, which means we need higher, uh, higher gain in our antenna. <coughs> Those are the things that worked really great. The systems that the students had developed worked really great. Uh, what we have is we anticipate as we start going further and start getting the curvature of the earth, we did anticipate losing communication, uh, losing telemetry link uh, uh, as the uh, package moved down range. And so what we had is we had a commercial product called a spot gen. And the spot gen is a GPS that has a satellite uplink. And so we had the spot gen on board to send us the coordinates of the landing zone so that once it landed, that final landing zone coordinates would be sent to us by spot gen. <coughs> and unfortunately, the spot gen did not report. We got one data point on re-entry, and then the spot gen did not work. Uh, I'll show you the data that we got from the from the spot gen here. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me uh, let me get out of your way. All right. So you can see here the data from the spot gen. As we were sitting at the launch site, we were getting data. We confirmed that we had a satellite uplink. We maintained data uplink through the initial part of the flight, and this is expected that we lost it here because it's a known thing that the spot gen shuts down at about 20,000 feet, so it was not unanticipated that at 20,000 feet it shut down. And so then we came up, we probably burst somewhere over Brady, and then we began re-entry. This point 14 here, uh, I'll zoom in, that is right past San Saba, Texas. And it looks like probably on the way in, <coughs> we hit 20,000 feet here, and the spot gen reacquired a satellite uplink, sent us one data point, and then completely silent. We estimate, based on wind conditions and the little bit that we know, that probably Eagle 6 landed somewhere here close to Lamita. And you can see that this is not a terribly uh, sparse area, so we remain hopeful that uh, we remain hopeful that someone will find it. We have our address on it, and we'll give it back to us. We had some cool equipment on there, so we're hoping to get that back. But you can imagine we're pretty uh, we're pretty uh, disappointed that we lost the package. What we feel good about is is that the systems the students did really worked very well, and their engineering worked. And what we see is we've got to go to a different system 
in the future. Uh, as I did more and more digging on spot gen, lots of people are having problems with spot gen. There are a lot of conditions in which spot gen sort of lets you down. And so <clears throat> it was a fairly expensive piece of equipment and we had flown it already. This was our sixth time to fly it. Uh, and so we really realized now that an advantage of losing the package is we're going to re-engineer everything from the ground up and we're going to make you know certain changes based on things we've learned in the first six launches. <clears throat> One of the things, uh, we're, we're already now, we've finished Eagle 6, we're looking forward to doing Eagle 7 in the next month or two. What we want to do on Eagle 7 is uh, we're not going to be using the microwave radios to telemeter data back. We're going to use something called the rock block. And the rock block is a satellite modem. And the rock block, rather than sending a microwave signal back to our home base here at the high school, the rock block will communicate the telemetry that we're taking on board the high altitude balloon, send it to satellites, and then those satellites will send it back to us here in the high school. So that should give us, there's a constellation of satellites that provide 100% coverage. And so if we do this thing carefully, we should be able to have coverage from launch to landing. And uh, no matter where it lands, we should be able to get the data points. And we should be able to get the data points coming in. The nice thing is we're going to integrate that into all the visuals and all the software that we've already established here on uh, uh, in the high school. But instead of coming directly back over microwave, we'll be going up, hitting the satellites, and have the satellites hit us back. We're pretty excited about that because that's going to allow us to get rid of one of the large radios. We can cut back on the weight. Also, it's going to cut back on the power, and the biggest factor of our weight is the size of the battery. So if we cut back on the power requirements, we can cut back on the size of the battery, further reducing the poundage. So we're hoping to cut the weight of Eagle 7 down, the payload weight down from 3.5 pounds to 2 pounds or under. With that, on Eagle 7, we're going to be going for a record altitude. We're going to, highest we've been so far is 120,000. We're going to try to, on Eagle 7, exceed 130,000 feet. The downside of the rock block in the satellite modem is that uh, it's a very low bandwidth connection, so we will only be able to send sensor data. We won't be able to send high resolution video. <clears throat> but that'll be what we do on Eagle 7. We're already looking at Eagle 8, and Eagle 8 will probably be in the fall of uh, the fall of this year. And what Eagle 8 will do is, is that we've seen that we can maintain a 20 mile telemetry link. And so what we will be doing on Eagle 8, uh, this is our chase crew vehicle. It was uh, donated by the uh, Slyker County. It was the command and control center uh, for the Slyker County Sheriff's Department. And it's just decked out with every imaginable law enforcement piece of equipment in there. And then we're adding to that our amateur radio and our ham, uh, our ham stuff uh, to that. So this is really, really uh, decked out vehicle. And what we'll be adding up here on this boom is we'll be adding our microwave positionable antenna to the uh, chase vehicle. And so the idea now is, is that instead of leaving our ground-based antenna here and have the high altitude balloon be getting further and further and further away, that ground-based tracking station will be put on the chase vehicle, and as the balloon goes, the vehicle will be chasing. Total path loss should uh, path link should be a lot smaller, and therefore we should be able to kind of keep telemetry by chasing the balloon on the ground. So that will be uh, that will be Eagle Eight, and if we can do this, then what we'll have to do is like have a cellular system to get the data from the chase vehicle back to the classroom. But if we do this just right, we might be able to maintain a live telemetry link, a live high-definition uh, high video link all the way throughout the flight. So that's going to be a pretty big engineering challenge. With that, we'll have to put the microwave radios back on, and that will probably get our poundage back up to three and a half pounds. FAA has a hard limit for the type of thing we're trying to do at four pounds. I mean, if you go above four pounds, it creates legal requirements we would not be able to meet. So under four pounds uh, is what we need to say. And we're hoping we're, we'll be able to uh, to do that by having the, the tracking antenna on the uh, on the uh, 
uh, chase vehicle. Now, the, the, these high gain antennas, the challenge with them is you have to point very precisely. And so the challenge is going to be is, is that as we hit the jet stream, the high altitude balloon is going to be going maybe 150 miles an hour. And so the target is moving and the antenna itself is moving. So you have two moving targets, one of them going really fast. And then you're going to have to perfectly point under all conditions this uh, parabolic dish that's on the uh, that's on the the chase vehicle. So that turns out to be a monstrously difficult math challenge. And so a lot of the things the students will be working on, there'll be a lot of engineering, but on Eagle Eight, a lot of it is going to be to solve that math problem of a uh, moving vehicle, a moving target, and constantly calculating and pointing the antenna where it needs to be. So anyway, really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. Appreciate all the people that left comments. It was a great. Uh, uh, it was a great uh, encouragement to Noah and Chase having you guys uh, 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 come in with your comments and all the people that have watched it. And so I uh, just want to let you know, keep your eyes open for Eagle 7. It will be coming up pretty soon. And I uh, hope you leave some comments and suggestions and your ideas down here uh, in the comments section. If you like this, give us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. Paul McWhorter, TopTechBoy.com. We will talk to you guys later.